Before we jump in, let's start with the basics. Let's talk about licensing. Uh, Azure Active Directory Premium Plan 2 is required. Now that license is included in Microsoft 365 E5, Security E5, EMS E5, and make sure you contact your Microsoft partner, reseller, or account team for more information. So why use PIM? Well, there's probably a few different reasons why, but hey, I'm a security guy, so what keeps me up at night is your admins have keys to the kingdom. And that means if they get compromised, it's game over. So this allows me to minimize the number of admins, and it, it allows me to require a justification for when someone needs to elevate their rights, maybe to become an admin, and it provides just-in-time access to those resources. And in other words, if I request maybe the uh, team's administrator role, then I only get it for maybe uh, 24 hours, whatever my policy uh, is, is dictating. And then everything I do as that team's administrator gets audited. And uh, at that point, once I'm finished with that, and when my 24 hour period has expired, my admin rights get revoked. Pretty easy, right? Now, what I think is interesting about this is there's a whole workflow around it, and I'll talk more about that here in just a moment, but let's talk about how it works. So step one is this allows my end users to request admin rights. Now I have to assign who's eligible to request admin rights, okay? So keep that in mind. Step two is when an eligible user needs to request, needs to elevate their rights, they issue a request. And then the request goes to a PIM approver or group of approvers and they approve. And then user gets the admin rights per the policy of that admin role. So that dictates um, you know, how many hours uh, they, they get the rights for um, and some other parameters. So that's pretty much what PIM is and how it works. So now let's jump into a quick demo and let me show you what it actually looks like. Okay, let's say we have an end user, Patty. She works at the help desk and from time to time, she needs to be able to make changes in the team's admin center. Well, we don't want to give somebody from the help desk standing admin rights to the team at team's admin center. That wouldn't be a good thing. So we're going to have Patty initiate a request to get temporary rights to make the change and do whatever she needs to do, and then the rights will expire after that. So for her to get access to the team's admin center, she's going to browse out to the Azure Active Directory admin portal and log in. Now, when she logs in, she does have access, but she won't have access or permissions to make any changes, so don't worry about that. She's going to browse to Identity Governance and then go to Privilege Identity Management. And then she's going to see a section for Azure AD roles, and she will see that she's eligible to promote herself to a Teams Administrator role. And she's going to click on Activate. Now, when she clicks on Activate, it's going to challenge her with multi-factor authentication so we can validate she is who she says she is. And once she responds to that challenge, okay, challenge accepted, once she responds to it, it's then going to allow her to fill out a justification form. And so here she can change her duration of uh, access time. So all, maybe it's an hour, maybe it's eight hours, whatever my policy allows my maximum to be. So I'm just going to put an hour for now. She can add a custom start time if she really wants to. And she's going to put in her ticketing system and then give it a ticket number and then provide a uh, justification and then click activate. Now when she does that, it's going to submit a request to the global administrator or whoever the approver is that then needs to approve this. So she doesn't have admin rights yet. So to do that, 
we're gonna go over to Megan, who is my global admin, and Megan's gonna get an email notification in just a moment saying that Patty is requesting her rights to be promoted. And there's the email notification letting Megan, the administrator, know that Patty is requesting to activate the team service administrator role. And I've got some information here. So I can just click on approve or deny request, and it's gonna take me out to the Azure portal. And I'm gonna see that there's a request pending right here for a team service administrator for the user Patty. And if I scroll over here, I can see some other information. So I'm just going to check the box next to that, and I'm gonna click on approve. And uh, I'm going to type in a justification. And click on confirm. Now all this is gonna be audited in the audit log. Now once I've done that, we're gonna log back in as Patty because Patty does need to sign out, unfortunately, and sign back in for those rights to be granted. And she's gonna log into the Teams admin portal. So let's go out to Teams and let's get signed in. I'll zoom in in just a moment. And here it is, signing Patty into the Teams admin portal, and then she can go in and make the changes that she needs to make. So maybe she needs to adjust, uh, you know, maybe she needs to create some kind of new messaging policy or make some kind of an adjustment. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's say, uh, you know, we're gonna turn off Immersive Reader. Now, I'm just doing this as an example. You probably would not give somebody an admin access from the help desk, maybe you would, but again, I'm just using this as an example. It could be a junior admin, it could be a different team. Um, you could use your imagination there, but I think you know what, where I'm getting at and what the point of this is. Now, whatever changes she makes, those get audited. And if we go over here to the audit log, I can see where Patty was granted that access. And then I can go into the Security Compliance Center here in Office 365 and do an audit log search and see exactly um, what's happening here. And then if I do have Cloud App Security, I could also monitor this as well. So once Patty does get access, you can monitor everything she does as that elevated administrator role. Now, if we go back to my, my other admin, Megan, the approver, here she got an email notification letting us know that uh, the request has been approved and then um, letting us know that it's been, it's been activated. And so at this point, Patty, uh, for all intents and purposes, she is a Teams admin for the next hour. Now, at the end of that hour, it's going to uh, retire and her access is gonna go back to being a standard user access. Okay, so that's just a high level overview, folks. I'm gonna jump into in the next video, how do you design for PIM? And we're gonna go deeper into this and talk about access reviews and talk about Azure resources, and we'll just keep peeling back the onion. So stay tuned for the next video.